Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, back here today in the tour van at Minnetonka. And today, a very special guest is here with us. It is Sebastian Twiddell, and Sebastian is a long drive competitor. Uh, and I think if you look at the size uh, of Sebastian, you'll see maybe part of the reason why. Uh, but also, you're here as an ambassador for Ripstick, and so we're going to talk about Ripstick a little bit as well. But Sebastian, thanks for joining us. Um, let's get kind of right into it with, with Ripstick. And I know you've been an ambassador for them for some time now. Um, and just talk about the, the speed training process that you go through and how Ripstick kind of works into that. Yeah, so we have long drive training. Everything's about speed, and mm -hmm. which ultimately leads to longer drives, which is the name of the game. And Ripstick has been just a huge part of just my training overall. So when I first signed with them and first started using Ripstick, I was around 158 mile an hour club speed. And I'd broken 230 ball speed as well. And then well, it was a month after using it, Broke the, got the double world record in club and ball speed of 169.6 and 240 <laughs> ball speed. So it oh has goodness. been a, a huge part of my training and been able to also been on the road like almost week in, week out. Yeah. Not having a solid place to train all the time, being able to grab a rib stick out of the bag and swing that, doing the speed protocol like three times a week is um, a great way to keep my body moving and keep the speeds up. Yeah. And yeah, that's just one of the ways I do implement it in training and then there's the overspeed work, so after hitting the ball, a lot of balls during the speed session, grab the ripstick out again and just really push those speed barriers and just swing it so, as hard as you can. And you, just so everybody heard that right, you said 169 club speed is what you've reached now? Yeah, yeah, 169.6. 240 on the ball speed? Yeah, 240. Uh, I have, I'm confident that this track man has never seen numbers like that, <laughs> uh, so we might see a little bit today. but. Um, so talk to me now a little bit about, so you've worked with Ripstick now and then and like the frequency you mentioned a little bit with how much you do in your training um, and the convenience, right? You can just kind of grab it and um, utilize the, the speed training protocol. Um, and you've seen kind of right away, did you, did those, your increase in speed, you mentioned you were at one, one, 150s as you started? Yeah, one high 150s. Did, it, and did then... it go up right away a lot or was it kind of a gradual process? It took about you? a week of like solid training before us started seeing like that, that improvement because i guess once you get to those certain speeds really yeah trying to push past those that's yeah. that's where it becomes that hard and that one percent sort of thing and yeah after a week i saw it jump up about two mile an hour and i was like oh cool this is yeah. uh, this is this is working well and then yeah we kept pushing that kept hitting a lot of balls in training used kept using ripstick and that's when we saw some okay. big jumps during the one of the sure big speed yeah sessions. well we are going to see a couple swings from you here. I do have one more question though, and that's for if you maybe have some words of advice for golfers watching this that they don't have the speed you do, but let's say that they are in their mind they want to hit the ball farther, um, and they don't really know how where to start, what to do first. Um, I guess what would you say is that first step to take, and maybe it's you know grabbing the rip stick and getting started, or how would you uh, what advice would you give those people to to get started and work on building that speed? Yeah, definitely. I think there's two, probably three options. There's, oh, sorry, three main things. There's the gym work, which is just getting the body fit and mm -hmm. not only able to, to produce those speeds, but do it safely where you're not getting injured and where that's going to impact your training. Um, secondly is using like a rib stick where yeah. you can use that like three, three, four times a week, use their protocols. And then you can, on top of that, you can make your own protocols, which work best for you. And again, the best, the good thing about rib stick is Instead of having three, four different clubs, it's just that one. You can right. change the weights in and out, so it's real, real convenient, real easy. Mm -hmm. And then doing that with actual speed sessions where you get out here on a launch monitor like Trackman, and you literally just club and ball speed numbers up and just hit it as hard as you can. Max intensity on every shot. Yeah. For, for a normal golfer, you can start anywhere from like even 20 to 30 balls. Do that like two, three times a week. You'd start seeing an improvement. And then you just keep building that up slowly, and yep. then you'll, that's when you'll see the gains. Yeah, but it's really about it. coming in, putting in the max intensity for speed, and that's, right. you, that's when you see the results. Yeah, the max intensity. I think <clears throat> there's a certain maybe you know thought that golfers have of max intensity isn't quite what they think of when they think of the golf swing. But in terms of gaining speed over the long haul, you know those speed sessions, I imagine it's sort of a muscle memory thing that over time you just, as you, if you put in those max intensity swings, you'll see that speed kind of gradually increase. Exactly, yeah. It's, um, and that's something I actually would think about each shot, it'd be all right, max intensity on this shot, not worrying about really swing mechanics or where the ball is going. It's just swing as hard yeah. as you can, as fast as you can, and just try and beat whatever the number was last up on the screen. That's, um, 
in my opinion, that's the best way we've found that works and yeah. produces the results. Awesome. Well, so what we have today now, we've got you with your driver, and since uh, since you're here and since we've got TrackMan, I don't see why we wouldn't have you hit a few tee shots here for yeah, us. So um, I know, and we're not, you know, you're not completely totally warmed up. We're just kind of having you swing a little bit. So maybe we won't expect those 160s or 240s. Yeah, that but, might um, take a while to you go. Know, either way, you're going to be hitting the ball a lot farther <laughs> and faster than any of us. So let's, uh, I'm, I'm going to see a few swings if you're okay with it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> 143 club speed, just like warm, not even. All right, so I, I got to ask now about that, uh, the double pump on the swing. Yeah. So how did, how did that come about with, I mean, is it, is it, obviously there's some science behind it helping you gain some speed there. Yeah, so that was actually initially a drill. Uh, my coach, Craig Parker, came with back home. So my tendency, my swing was to always collapse in okay. with my arms at the top. And in terms of speed, it just wasn't very efficient. Definitely wasn't using the um, reasonable potential I could reach with it. Okay. So he said, go to the top, plant the left heel and keep my right arm wide, yeah. which keeps my arms away from the body. Oh. That way I'm using my sort of long lead levers, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And um, yeah, that just really helped in terms of, yeah, keeping it wide away from my body and speeds. From the first time I did it, jumped up five, six mile an hour yeah. just from doing that. And then from there we saw, it just felt good as well. Yeah. And from there we decided to see how fast we huh. could get it. And that's when um, we saw the 169 club speed and yeah. 240 full <laughs> speed. So, geez. Yeah. All right. Now let's see a couple more here. Let's get one on the face or a square on the face. Yeah, see somewhere. How fast that thing goes. Oh, that one's hit better. 207 ball speed. On a typical like swing session, how many you know like how many full swings will it take you usually to be like totally warmed up and trying to like max out? Uh, we've found that usually after about 10, 12, 12 to thirteen okay. shots is usually you start seeing it jump up. Yeah. Uh, usually, the last few speed sessions before the last event it was probably two swings to get into the one fifties. Yeah. And then with that, you see ball speed start to climb yeah. as well. Because you probably at a certain point, then it starts to drop as you get kind of fatigued. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing. It's with the speed stuff, we found that it takes a lot of balls for it to actually start dropping really? back down. Yeah. Huh. So to end a session, it's always more, we just call it there. Yeah. Because the speeds never really like drop back down to where they started, okay. which is different to what you like think usually. But yeah. that's, huh. um, Interesting. that's just one thing we've sort of really, really huh. noticed. But. Now I will also point out to for the viewers. So, well, first of all, your your driver's at what loft and what length on the shaft too. Right now, the loft is so the standard head comes at four and a half. It's more like a four point two degree head. So, okay. And we've got it on minus two and draw setting, so it's a it's around two two point four degrees. <laughs> two point four degrees. Yeah, two point four degrees. And you're playing the forty. I'm sure that's forty. Yeah, just under forty eight inches with this one. And yeah. This one is close to a like a soft, soft stiff. Okay. Um, yeah, in between like a woman's flex and a stiff, really. Okay. But uh, yeah, so it's an so, it's a different kind of shaft. Well, yeah. So that's I'm gonna I wanted to say that because it's very, very difficult to hit a driver like that straight. <laughs> it can be challenging. Yeah. I mean, challenging. Yeah. I, mean, I that is yeah yeah that's pure distance you're chasing with that. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. So that's again like with long drive you get those six balls per set to find yeah. the grid, which is. Usually at most 60 yards wide, sometimes yeah. one event we did was actually 32 yards wide, which was... Ooh, that just, could be difficult. That could, that was very yeah. difficult. So you're kind of just, sets. when you get those six balls, you're just trying to find one or two that, that you hit. Exactly, yeah. You, the first the first two balls, if you sort of put some feelers out there and yeah. you find the grid, you just find you almost sort of can relax and just sort of let it go a bit yeah. more and you start chasing a bit more. Um, but yeah, then it comes, yeah, then there's like that mental stuff that goes in it as well. Yeah. Which, just focusing each other time, but no, it's yeah, just hit as hard as you can out there, and <laughs> yeah, longest drive, longest drive wins. I 
I love that. All right, let's see. Let's try to get you to 150 club speed here. Can we do yeah. that? Yeah. You can do that. Oh, there's 150. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh my goodness. 150 club speed. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, so this is this has been fun, and, and I'm gonna tease one more video we're gonna do. So this is if you've made it this far, we've got another one coming that we're gonna film here shortly, and that is um, taking Sebastian with that driver he's playing and comparing it to an old tailor-made burner that I found off the rack here, uh, which will be a lot of fun. Very different driver builds, and we'll talk about that in the video. But uh, Sebastian, for those who want to maybe tune in or learn more about the kind of long drive comp competitions and championships that you're competing in. Where should they go to learn more about that stuff? Yeah, so if they check out the World Long Drive um, website or Instagram page, all the information's posted on there and upcoming events, and how to register, how to get into it. And I know they're really trying to do a lot more in terms of getting people into it. So the a bit more education stuff yeah. as well. So it's, yeah, a lot of information out there. Yeah, yeah. And you've seen a little bit of it kind of spike in popularity here too. So, um, and then uh, lastly, I'll also remind golfers to get a ripstick for yourself, either in the store at Second Swing or can shop for it online at secondswing.com as well. So, Sebastian, thanks for joining. Uh, that's a heck of a lot of speed, uh, but we got more stuff coming, so stay tuned.